All right. Call to order at 512. Uh, hi, my name is Steve Kessler. I am acting as chair today. My co chair, Leslie, would like to take a little break for now. Um, all right. Do I actually have to repeat everything that's right there? Remember no, no, we just no. any, we can go on to number two. Yeah, we're going on, right on to the any changes to this current agenda that we're working on. Yes, I have a few additions. Okay. Uh, one is going to be to welcome Allison. Uh, the second is that Erica McKinney has resigned from the TCC. Another one is meeting scheduling and cancellations and um, policy questions on forum versus non-official meetings. Can you repeat the last one, Paul? Sure. Policy question on forum versus non-official meeting. Great. Thank you. Where are our minutes? There are three pages for July 10th, and there's one page for August 29th. Oh, they actually say minutes up here. Okay, we got to review the minutes from, uh, let's go with July 10th first. Uh, we probably should go right through this, right? I mean, it's been a little while. So, um, feel free to take a moment to read through them. Yeah, let's do that. I just have one suggestion in the minutes. Is okay. that Pam and I are not committee members, but we weren't appointed by the select board. And so, that's on my list. Too. The staff program. So. Oh, yeah. And that's going to apply to both sets of minutes. Okay. That's hard to say in the word Wakefield. Mm -hmm. See any changes from my perspective? I see one typographical error on page three, line three. It should be a sample question, not an sample question. I don't that correct. But that's for not, so it doesn't actually require the written. There's also one on the first page, number two, with the resignation of Roger. Um, it says he not. He is no longer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And on page two, uh, halfway down on the addressing program with Mark Lee, um, in parentheses, it says a pool would, would significant funding. That require? Does it make sense? I'm Thank assuming you. that's what you mean, require. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it? Any okay. others? You know, the other thing I would question is, do we need the mission statement at the bottom of every single page? Uh, generally, the minutes are only one page, so, um, but we can certainly 
take the, take it out altogether. It was recommended that I put it on there. I, I think we should have it. I just don't know if we need it on every single page. It's just minor. That's all. What is the preference of the committee? Doesn't matter to me. Whatever's just... easiest for whoever's taking the minutes will be my vote. What was that? Whatever's easiest for the minute woman. Man taker, what happened? <laughs> secretary. It's like, oh, we're going, oh, we're going right to the secretary? Mm -hmm. I've been voted in already. <laughs> no, I know, but I didn't know if those were the words we actually did. Mm -hmm. position. Um, so I can take them off, Lynn. That's good. We, I'll just remove them on subsequent pages. Thank you for the suggestion. Anybody else? Motion to accept these minutes. Motion to accept these minutes. Second. With changes. All in favor? All right, moving right along. The August 29th minutes. I wonder where it says action steps, September 18th meeting. Is there anywhere that we should indicate why September 18th meeting did not happen? Is that a No, okay, not necessary. Move to accept. Let's see the changes, but when we see the changes, not me. Um, second move. I did second. Thank you. Yeah, is that enough of a review for everybody? Is there anything yes. you want to cover on that, though? No, I think that's helpful. Well, I want to actually maybe use Mark for a moment on um, so these meetings for August, these minutes for August 29th, that was a meeting we had here. Okay, so there's no minutes or any notes on the meeting that we had with the interview with Robertson. Yeah, that wasn't really a meeting. That was pretty much having to tell us whether you're going to stay with us and try to come up with a plan. But that wasn't a committee meeting. Okay, were you present for that? So it's just you and I. So what I didn't get away from it, which I had a hard time um, translating to the group here, was. Um, first of all, he's from Portland, Oregon, not Portland, Maine. I think so. Yeah. Because this whole time I thought he was Portland, Maine. Did you get that feeling too? Actually, Pam is the liaison, so I wasn't really too involved with that. Okay. But I think you're right. He's from Oregon. All right. I was surprised when I saw he was from the West Coast. So that was a shock to me. Uh, just, just a point of order. Is this conversation going under Cameron and progress reports and next steps? I was going to ask a question about the, progress, the next steps about that meeting that we had, um, because I believe that the August 29th meeting is a result of the private meeting we had with Harriman and Robertson. Um, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to try to get a feel because I might have read the meeting incorrectly, but he will assist with gathering public opinion, distinguishing needs versus wants. The committee wants to focus on needs of the community. But when I saw a, a report from Mark Hall talking about the negotiations, it clearly said that we were in charge of 
most everything. Part we? Yeah. So it was I, I got a little confused and then I like I guess I, I just I'm confused from the meeting that we had that day versus where we are right now and that they're negotiating terms like um probably this is kind of bleeding into five. So do you wanna yeah that's fine. Go okay. Go I'm just wait. noting that Stephen Mark had a meeting with uh Karen and CEO. Was that who he was? Mark Lee's right and Pam and Ryan Roberts. And Ryan Roberts. And you want to give us an update on that now? That so we're skipping four and going to five, essentially, is what we're doing. Yeah, I think we should do that. Okay. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. So my understanding from Pam, because I don't think I was at your July meeting, right, was the reason was um she thought Harriman Associates was maybe going to pull out of the whole prospect um and then she said related that you guys are not that happy because you weren't getting what you thought you were going to get from them but you wanted something relatively similar to what you and H was going to do with a lot of public um feedback gathered from multiple sources Pam expressed that to Mark Lee and then the response was the meeting that we had with him she said, you know, the committee's kind of certainly wondering what the plan is. Um, and he said he was going to bring in someone else as a subcontractor to try to do co collective community input and things. Um, so the last I knew, they were negotiating, they hadn't finalized things as in early September because they're trying to still negotiate a price. Apparently, they had successfully negotiated a price. They have not come back to us and asked for more money. Um, so, whatever the original amount was. I guess they figured out what amount was going to get paid to Brian Robertson. And the next step is for them now to meet with you guys and then come up with their plan for executing the public engagement. So it is still led by the Harriman Group. Right. Okay. And the other one is subcontracted with them. Right. And I think you're referring to an email that was sent um, from Mark, and it was there were details, and I can I can pull it up um, about there were a lot of details in the email, and a lot of it contained that the committee would do the focus group, the committee would do all of these things, which we've been very clear that there's only so much we can do. So um, I think that's of concern. So well, in our in the meeting that we had with them, we did talk about um, that we would end up leading the focus group specifically, but we were interested in them compiling questions for us because he seemed to have a lot of experience with the questions. So essentially, we would help facilitate the groups, possibly even lead the groups, but it would be, a, it would be likely a Zoom call. Um, so he would be able to attend as well, but it would be up to us to sort of facilitate the creation of the groups. My take, if I saw in the weather app, all the summer meetings, was almost like it was being communicated to them that you guys wanted certain groups contacted and certain questions asked. And so I, I don't know if it's so much they are trying to push things back on you or is they felt like they wanted to accomplish the desire for control over some of this area. So if I'm I'm looking at the email, um, Brian and I have been coordinating his role on the outreach below as a description and also role for the committee to play. We are working out the fees, um, developing the question for the focus group to meet and discuss the goals and topic areas, help develop a preliminary list of topics, review the final focus group's questions, and review findings from the focus group. My understanding is that we are being asked to do the focus group questions, which we have a document started and we're doing that. Um, the committee would conduct the focus groups and compile the results from the focus group through market decisions Though market decisions could also provide assistance for this as well, though this would add to the cost. For the community survey, need to review focus group results, help to develop survey topics, help to draft and finalize a survey questionnaire, program the survey into our online survey platform and provide a link to the town. A link the town could then provide to people to complete the survey, output data, provide survey results, review results with the town. We would presume that the town would distribute the survey link to residents. 
So that was on September 14th. So for me, it's hard to know what exactly is needed here for that. Can you forward that email to me so I can compile it with these things? Yeah. I think that's the point of the next meeting with them is to yeah. nail that down and figure out who to apply. Okay. 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 I just want to get us on the same page because there's been a lot of back and forth and I don't always know who's on what emails anymore and et cetera. So I just wanted to make sure everybody understood where we're at and um, that it is a bit different than what we had seen with UNH and that we sort of either have, we kind of have to come to accept and just want to put that out there and make sure everybody understands that we're going to be relatively in charge of these focus groups. And that's what we'll be taking on as a task. It's better to be transparent and mm -hmm. be surprised. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that if we can get these focus groups moving, then we can move on and try to actually get something done here. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't get out of the meeting when we met in, uh, with the Harriman and Robertson that I, I didn't, I guess, I guess I kind of felt like we should have been asked if, it's okay to hire this company, but um, so I, when they said they're negotiating, I was kind of taken aback, like, well, well slow, slow with your role. We haven't even had a meeting about you yet, but um, I think we've talked on the side of, uh, enough to understand that we should, we'll accept this moving forward. I mean, ultimately, our contract is with uh, Harriman, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that are the elevation performing. If they want to hire someone else to help them, that's fine, but if they better still perform, yeah, right? They still have to live up to what they promised us to do. Yeah, I think the fact of the matter is that no matter who we take that's not UNH, we're in charge of focus groups anyway. So, unless we went to spend 75,000 bucks for somebody else, although our, our original contract never said that we were going to run the focus groups, you know, with Harriman, so they are the RFP. Um, so if we don't want to, that's certainly something that could be raised and brought up at this next meeting with them. Um, but my sense was that the committee wanted, it's almost was given them direction, we want you to hit A, B, and C, and we want to do this. But I think they maybe took that as they were deferring to the committee because they thought you guys had, as opposed to, it was not just, here's it is in your lap, figure it out, give us results. Um, it was make sure to do things. So I think they may be trying to accommodate us rather than push for a but. We'll see in the next meeting. Yeah, I guess we will because I remember every time I was speaking, the Robertson would come. He would he would talk as if this is the way we're going. This is the way we're going to form the questions. Mm -hmm. Like he was basically taking the lead. Like I will provide you with questions, in my opinion. Right. And then I saw in that in that recap that it was kind of on us for the questions, but we'll find out next time. But I do think we we all need to be prepared with questions for that meeting. Um, so we need to. Maintain that pace, and we can chat about that tonight as well. Yeah. Can we change the order and hold the focus group questions for the end? Because that's going to take the longest to get through some of the new agenda items we had today. Mm -hmm. Is everyone in agreement with that? Sure. So, welcome. Let's do the welcome. Allison, <laughs> Aaron Blaze, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, did you guys want to know about me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, as you know, I have family that has lived in Thompson for many, many years. My dad and my grandparents and my great grandparents, my great grandparents used to live on the Middlesex Road. Uh, my grandparents bought the house on the Forest Side Road, and my great uncle built the house across the street from it. So that's where I live. Been back in Thompson for about two and a half years, and I am married. And um, between the two of us, we have five kids, but they're all pretty much adults. Um, the youngest is 17. Um, he does not go to school in Thompson. He is with his dad, but we see him on the weekends because he's a senior and he had a life there. So we didn't want to make the move to Thompson. But um, my husband and I work for IDEX and um, I, he works from home every day. I tend to work from home sporadically. And we have 
Jim Cabot's. And I don't know, what else would you like to know? Yeah. Uh, this is my first time being on a committee. Um, and when I did my interview, they asked if I wanted to do the finance committee as well. So I might be done with that. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. That's not the rules against that. He's doing both. He's doing both. Okay. Well, guess what? Anne's going to do both now. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk about that. Here, we though. cannot. No. No. All right. No, 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 no. Great. Yes. So We're then. very excited to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to actually be in a meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, the next item, number seven, is now Erica McKinney has resigned from the TCC. You want to tell us about that? Did you get an email? Yes, from her? Uh, she had been holding off on resigning because she was still involved with the Google Docs, and it seems that we've resolved that. Um, they we found out that they may be stored in the Google Drive. They understand that any documents are available to the public upon request. So um, she has moved on and um, resigned. So we'll miss her, but yes. I didn't run into her the other day. She was all smiled. She was the one other person I met beside me. Um, we need more people if anybody's listening. Have you met Pam? No, just oh, heard okay. about her. Both my dad and my uncle were like, say hi to me. Okay. We have two more spots available, right? right. Yes. Especially if we're going to be responsible for more. <laughs> Okay. The next item from today would be um, meeting scheduling and cancellations. That something we wanted to really discuss as a group because there's been a lot of meeting cancellations and rescheduling and changing. And so um, I would just like to make a recommendation um, and just say, since we normally meet on the first Monday of the month, that we make that our standard meeting time, and then have the third Monday of the month blocked off in our calendar. So if we need a second Monday, we're not going, can you make it, can you not make it? I don't know if everyone's agreeable to reserving those two spots on our schedules. Most of the time we'll just need one, perhaps for the month of October, we'll need two, but I foresee in the future that we might revert back to one. I think that's nice. Right. I think that I'm able to do that. Okay. Yeah, of course for me. So does it work for you? And what about time? Is five I'm open. doable? Six? Uh, I'm, I am open at five until December. December, and okay. just for the next for December, January, February, I would have to do after six. Okay. Six or after? Well, my practice ends at six, so six oh five. Can you do six? Then we just keep it at six. Oh, I can do six. Mm -hmm. Let's just do six consistently. So we're always the same. We're not changing it during the year. Oh, uh, I am flexible. Let me just check the calendar. Like, I know like the 16th, we got three meetings that night. So we're ahead of the Board of Appeals, but we're good because we were at five that night. If I didn't have basketball, I would be voting for the earlier time. I'll just throw that out there. Well, we're going to change time in a few weeks anyway, so it'll be dark, dark. <laughs> Regardless of the Yeah, I'm already sleeping even earlier. Right? <laughs> I keep finding myself tilting like this because my antibiotics are like moving every time I move wow. my head. It's so annoying. It's not contagious, I, it's an outer ear infection sort of here. I'm sorry, I should put masks on my ears. <laughs> so the 16th, there's another meeting in this room at 7. So I think we probably should stay from 5 to the 16th. Okay. Um, but I'll give us an hour and a half to two hours. And then. And will Harriman continue to come in person, do we think? Or will it because the other is Zooming that we would offer Zoom to them? They haven't confirmed that even that date works yet. But I would encourage them if possible to the person but it would be a better experience. Um, so the first Monday in November looks like this room is booked by no one else yet. So you could have a link if you wanted to for that one. It's rather than five. So let's record it. 
That would be the seventh. That's election day. Uh, no, let's see. It's next day, Monday, Monday the sixth of November. So oh yeah, this yes, thank you. Same thing for December. So I think the Board of Appeals is an unusual thing on the 16th. Um, okay. So if you want six o'clock at night, um, starting basically any day after the 16th of Did you have no preference? October, you can have it. I have no preference. And do you have preferences? What was the five or six? Do you have a preference for five or six? I just want, I would just like us to be consistent so we're not changing the meetings because of someone's preference. So. And do you have a preference, guys? I'm fine either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Great, but you know, and maybe not the first thing, but yeah. So we don't. Uh, I can't be here. She can't be here on the 16th. No, oh, okay. But we so, would still have a quorum. Yes, we need to all be here. <laughs> We have notice, sorry. So, so we will do five o'clock on the October 16th and on November 6th, was it? Yes. Um, 6 p.m. Let's do six. And do we want to do December 4th, 6 p.m.? 6.15? Just for Steve to be able to be here at 6.15. It would suck to say six and have you always waiting for me five, 10 minutes. But November's, oh, I see. I'm just saying if you want to keep it set at a certain time you're at the middle school at, until six? high school high school until six six fifteen i'm fine with six fifteen it's only okay. going to be three nights so yes but i can yeah rush here though to be honest I, those three nights i can get out earlier but it's, it's fine. no six fifteen on november 6th okay. and that's through like march that time you might go it would just be yeah it would be the february meeting would be, but then March would be, I could be back and meet at two o'clock. So for now, why don't I put a block out so that we have a room reserved and stuff. I'll block out on the town calendar for the first Monday of the month, starting at 6.15. I'm probably this room, I think this is the conservation committee is on the uh, And But I will also block out because at least one of the consultants can kind of looks like the 16th at five in this room, but I won't block out Although you guys will save them on your calendars, right? I won't block out a room yet for the third uh, Monday of each month. Unless you I agree with that. We just need to block them in our calendars. So. Yeah. So that's sure we can find them for you. Correct. Okay. Correct. I agree with that. So, um, it's a calendar thing. We don't probably need a motion to set our calendars for two months, right. so we don't really need that. Okay. So the first and third Mondays for the TCC meeting, the 16th at 5 p.m., November 6th at 6.15, December 4th at 6.15. And January and February as well. And and more. Can you change the website? Because it now says we meet on the first or second. Yeah. Can you change it to say we meet on the first and if a second meeting is necessary, it's the third yeah. Monday? Can you do that? Yeah. The first Monday in January is New Year's Day. You don't want to meet on that day? No, so we meet on the 8th. <laughs> right? And Unless you want to use the third one then. Oh, that's probably why we came there though. So. January 8th and then February. Does somebody have a February calendar? In their phone? I do. Um, uh, the first will be the fifth, February fifth. Okay. And then there's nothing booked yet for the eighth, so we'll be the first to play that. Then. All right. So I'll do those. Um, the ninth item is the policy question on core versus non-official meetings. There was some discussion um, about. Is it okay if I do play? There was some discussion about um, the meeting with the chairman and the new guy, Brian Robinson, could only meet on October 4th, and we didn't have a quorum. We couldn't get four people to go to that meeting because that was the time they wanted. So we really wanted there to be a connection 
because we haven't met this person yet and just to have a meet and greet would be good and so we had talked about that possibility and then I got a notice that and I thought we had all agreed on that and then I got a notice saying that the meeting was canceled and so I, I if a person makes a, a suggestion or a preference that shouldn't make an outcome for a decision we need to all be part of that decision and not just have one person do it and one person cancel does that make sense um what i'm so i thought we had agreed that we were going to move forward with this meet and greet so we could actually connect him so that the next meeting he came to he would at least have met some of the people we know what we were what are your thoughts on all of that it's kind of like um confusing and how there was so much communication back and forth about meetings and what we were going to do and what's the next step. So how can we resolve that if it doesn't happen in the future? Mark has oh, oh, yes, a comment. Yeah, or, or maybe I'll accept blame. Because okay. um, pretty much I've been leaving, or Pam's been the one, I would say, hurting the cats. Um, and then she left on vacation. So then I saw that they asked about the fourth. She wasn't around to do anything. So I set out, does this work? If not, I started with Steve and Leslie. They said, let's get everyone else. And, and it became apparent to me that we weren't going to get enough to have a quorum. So I said, okay. And knowing too that all these guys are expensive. So I don't think if we're not going to really be able to accomplish something, probably isn't worth having them come. Um, so yeah, I was the one that said it. I don't have, you know, it's hard with not everyone in the same place and responding to emails and trying to figure out what the standards are or not. So when it looked like we only had a couple of people available, I said, okay, that's not going to work. We'll just find a day when we can get more people. Um, as far as, there really is not such thing as an unofficial meeting. Right. So if we have a forum of this group together, it should be an official meeting. Um, and it should be, I, it doesn't have to be reported, but ideally, so that if someone wants to um, get up to date on what we're doing, or maybe do committee member or whatever else, things are reported and they're posted. We should have minutes, it should be. Um, so, now that doesn't mean that necessarily you can't the committee can't charge um you know let's say that it wasn't going to look like it didn't look like you're going to get everyone present you could certainly at this meeting say uh, members a and b um why don't you along with some staff members or pay or mark talk to try to find out this information you know so you can kind of leverage your work by giving assignments out and have people report back but if you have based on your current numbers three of you in the forum um, if you have three of you talking about because you only have five people in the right now, right? So, oh, because one just left, yeah. 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 So based on your current numbers, three is a quorum. So if three of you are together, we should be giving notice of the meeting and we should be um you know posting it and let people have a chance to participate and stuff. And I'll take some responsibility for that too, because I feel like we've just in the last two to three months really just had this conversations with Harriman, have not been together. And I feel very strongly that with such a small group, it just, we really run a risk of dividing. And I don't want that to happen. I want us to stay a group that works well together. And I, so my input was, I think if we can't most all be there that we shouldn't um, do anything because then it's just another, it feels like another side conversation. And I want everybody to know everything that's going on. I think that is the healthiest way for us to move forward because of responsibilities and, and what we're doing. So I I, uh, I agree. And the way that I took that, um, if we're not all available, then it will be a meet and greet. I took that as a fact, not as an action. So I just read the email differently. I didn't take that as a, yes, we're gonna do the meet and greet. I, and I could look back and see maybe, I mean, that's the thing that happens is I much prefer to be in a room together than doing all the emails because they're doing you know other things and trying to catch up with people. What also played into this decision-making was Mark, you had suggested that if we wait for a later meeting that there may not be enough time to do a survey yes. in conjunction with the November voting. So. There was this piece of information that said we have to do something immediately rather than wait. And so when it got canceled, I was like really um, wondering how how is this? It's better to do it sooner than later. Fit in. And so I wanted to ask exactly what this survey you're talking about in November, how that was going to work. It was nothing more than an idea for me, you know, oh, okay. a possible thing. I've been involved in a couple different efforts where. It was a pretty good place to get community input because you go to the polls and you can 
as we did with the survey last year with the June election. Um, but it isn't anything that's been adopted. I mean, we're paying these consultants money for a reason. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, they should be giving us ideas and things to do. Um, and so it's nothing adopted by the committee. So uh, it's almost too late for it now, I think, because of the, which is why I kind of backed off that is um, because early voting is going to start in the next week or so. Um, and it's obviously not going to be ready. And, and we want the expert input in the questions and stuff. But it's better, I think, to wait and do it, not necessarily at the polls, than do something rushed and not have a well designed survey with people that are experts designing it. They are the right questions and statistical data. So, because we got a great response for our last survey, but it may, there's probably better ways to get some of the information to really judge. Because in essence, the last survey came out with, um, yeah, we like it all. <laughs> well, then maybe there's a better way to try to figure out what's the priorities of what we've used. So rather than rush and get no further than we were, it's been better to get them fully engaged and get their expertise to design a survey. So that's why I kind of backed off the thing. We do not much. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Anybody else comment? No, it's helpful to talk that through. Hmm? It's helpful to talk that through. I think we're all on the same page. We mm -hmm. want to work together, and we're just not really sure what's happening with Harriman. But I, I think we should not have. I like Mark's suggestion of saying we can charge members to have a meeting and gather information on our behalf, but that request needs to take place in the meeting and not just with an email. If that makes sense. So it's part of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Would people can occur with that? Yes. Yeah, and we were always intending to keep it. It just it was supposed to be one meeting. Yeah. That was supposed to be alone with these guys, and it ended up being. And we decided that it was better to not. It was right after we were not happy with them, and I was fired up, and it was. We decided it would be better than instead of being seven against one, it would be fine. It better to be two or three. And it was and this is going back to main sheet. Yeah, it was supposed yeah. to be one meeting, and then that one got canceled, yes. and then this one got moved, and it was just it, it was. And the whole itinerary it was from problem. Harriman has not been followed or timing wise, so we lost the summer. So, so I went trying to get back on track. I read through a lot of the meeting notes when we were going to meet the last time, and so yeah, I kind of got that impression. Yeah. So um, just for clarification purposes, we've got our schedule set up. How are we going to fit Brian Robertson into our schedule? Who's going to be in charge of that? Well, Is that the town's going to I do just it? took um, some of the comments I read in the last couple of emails to Art. <laughs> said that, hey, there are consultants. We're paying them. Um, they need to fit our schedule. So I sent an email this afternoon to Mark Lee, Brian, everyone, uh, and said that the committee is now settled on definite meeting dates of the first of each month in the evening and uh, potentially the, the, the uh, third Monday. Um, can you make, and I threw out the invitation for the 16th, so far Robertson said yes. Um, haven't heard back from Mark Lee with what yet. But and Allison, I'll, somebody Allison said yes. Okay, so, so someone else. Great. So it looks like that meeting will happen, um, but I'll basically ask them to come on one of your meeting dates rather than you try to find it. So Allie Tippery is from Market Decisions. How did she spell her name? A L L I E or Y? A L L I S O N. Tippery is T I P P E R Y for market decisions. Will attend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. So now we didn't do. we didn't present that to them as two options, right? It, it's we we wanted to be the first. I said that October sixteenth. Yeah. Like if you want to get moving, right? Yeah. But if for some reason they couldn't, I'll be that night then. Next choice is going to be November. So if they, November. in the future, if they decide that they cannot make the first Monday, are we still having our meeting on that Monday and then also on the third third Monday, or is it automatic deferment? It depends what we have to do. It depends what's on the schedule. If we have to come up with questions, then we might be working. Well, at least in our brains, we have a backup. Yeah. But now we have a backup. In my mind, we're meeting twice a month for the next couple months to try to get on track. That's enough. That's what I'm thinking. But I'll be available. And if we don't meet, it's a bonus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we have dinner at home. Right. <laughs> 
So that takes care of the questions um, that were added tonight. So what we have left on the agenda, if I can help support, is action steps and the um, the questions for both groups. I think we'll be two and two and the same right there, right? I, right. The yeah. action steps are clear. Every we can just put that in now if you want. That everyone yeah. should go to the, the Google Doc. Members should go to the Google Doc. So now we have a date that needs to be done by the sixteenth. Uh, does that? Can anybody look at it now? I, I wanted to talk about the focus group. I should pull it up. Okay. okay. So I think maybe uh, youth had been filled out. If Thompson had a community center, would you attend? And I added, if not, why? And then how often do you think you would come to a community center? Would you want the center to have any of the following activities? And there's, you know, A through L there. Would you volunteer to help with community service programs? Would you want to help help with life skills like cooking? Would you like help with life skills like cooking and balancing a checkbook? And what other activities or classes would be of interest to you? So I took those. And copied to different sections, to different sections mm -hmm. and put some thought into fine tuning it to the population. But I welcome any changes. <laughs> you know, it really was it's a, a working document. It is. So it yes. Yes. So um, I tried to be as thoughtful as I could with that. So um, that's where that those efforts and came think from. outside the box. Whatever questions you can come up yeah. with. It's better to have too many that we can't use them yeah. than not enough to really get what we're looking for. And I like what Mark said that we want to fine tune. You know, everybody wants everything. How do we how do we get them to focus on if you maybe we need to do a thing that says if you had to choose between this and this and this, what is your priority? You and, and, and this may be going back to the initial thing of who's doing what role. I almost think if you try to fine tune these questions too much at this point. The consultant's going to take that as, oh, they don't really want me doing too much of this. So I'd almost say, here's a list of things we'd like to kind of get addressed. What do you think the best way to do it? What questions do you recommend? You know, and then push it back to them to come up with some of that. Because well, I think if you spend too much time fine tuning these, the consultant's going to figure this is what you okay. want. Well, I also feel like a lot of this is leading. I think you may need to be more neutral to get a feel of what the community wants because these are very, very specific. And you need a place somewhere to ask the community for something that's not on here. What are you looking for? Because you're not, you're not, to me, you're not pulling that information being this specific. I love that. Yeah, that's You know great. what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What so, are you looking for in a community center? Just an open-ended? Yeah, more uh, something more sure. open-ended. And that's where I'm looking to them for guidance because this is way not my area of expertise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I my original I, I agree with you. My original thought process was for us to have an idea of what we want, hear what they have to offer, and then we have we're on the same page as to what input we could say back to them. So right, right. It was kind of just to be prepared to be prepared. Um, yeah. So I thought we were charged with creating focus group questions. No, no. that's not what we wanted. And no, if I know, no, but then I thought somewhere in there, I thought well, that's what they're being hired for. Yeah, no. and, and now we have all of this, and I'm I don't want to say I'm frustrated, but I'm again, I feel like we're doing their job. You know what I mean? We so, have a meeting coming up on the 16th. Let's not give them our list and say what if what questions have you prepared for us? Yeah. Or that may be much too much to expect in that meeting. It might be um what do you think? Yeah, what do you think we should use for questions? Or maybe not expect them to have their list right that moment. Oh, actually, but I can throw out the email inviting them. If yeah, you email so. them and invite them yeah. to come with some questions that they think we should use, that yeah. would yeah, be wise. Yeah, I can at least yeah. come with examples. Um, and maybe we do an abbreviated list based off of this. Because I, I, I just feel that this is. But very, the questions are all different based on what they're using for. If it's for youth versus seniors versus families versus. Or for what kind of data they're collecting. If they're collecting data at a fair, 
you don't want to ask a thousand long questions. You want to ask short questions because you want answers back quick. But if it's like a focus group, right? You want different questions. Well, we don't know what they're deciding to because he says he has access to so many different ideas. Well, we don't know what ideas he wants Robert to use. Right? Yes, because he says he's got experience with mailings, with focus groups, with all this stuff. But it's up to him to tell, dictate what we're doing to get this information to him. I agree. Let's hear what he has to say. We don't know focus groups are what we're doing. We right. we like the idea of focus groups, but if he can get all the information without focus groups, let's do that. So I mean, we're caught up on focus groups, but maybe that's not what his suggestion is going to be with his experience. Yeah, we don't uh, we don't really know what his approach is going to be. So okay. so that changes questions also. So we could be bashing our heads in right now. I think he's just doing that way for a while. Right. To be honest True. with you, if he's just doing a mailing, those those questions are completely different than a focus group question. Okay. I mean, they're similar in a way, but how you phrase them is different. Well, that's just it. I mean, because because you know darn well if we ask people, do you want a pool? Of course, everybody wants a pool, that's right? True. I mean, but that's, that's not necessary. My concern is if you ask certain questions that could be considered leading. And then everybody says, oh, yes, we want a pool. We want pickleball courts. But then those things never materialize. Then everyone's going to come back and say, oh, well, I filled out that survey, but it didn't do any good because we never, 90% of the people wanted a pool. It didn't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, he had mentioned that in his experience, his, his best responses were questions that were very broad and allowed the surveyor to give full feedback. Yeah, they need like, to do the data mining no. no, for yes, us. No. Agreed, 100%. Good. Motion to accept that. <laughs> I mean, I still feel like we're pretty well prepared with what we've done so far. No, you're very well prepared. I mean, but, most people wouldn't have done you the amount of work you guys have done. Yeah, I mean, I, I think your enthusiasm or maybe frustration of the progress of doing things yourself you don't want that to get in the way of them doing their job. Right, right. I mean, I, I feel like we can only push it so far. You know, we can we can literally sit here for hours and hours and hours and hours coming up with yeah. questions Let's and wording it different ways. But, but again, that's an area of expertise. It's not my it's area. So. I joined this to, to like do fundraising and stuff. You know, we're not there yet. Definitely <laughs> not secretary. Not there. <laughs> But um, that's just my two cents. So, so are there any action question. items prior to the 16th? I mean, that doesn't mean that if someone doesn't think of something else, that it shouldn't be added. You know what I mean? But if this approach, which we've just started, is not the right approach, then we don't need to even add. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, I think utilizing it's not a bad idea. So if any one of us want to go on there and I mean, it was created for a reason. People, right. There was time put into it. I think we should use it in preparation for the table that's been set so far. So we can let down many times. I mean, there's a pretty good chance we might be again as well. So and we can use the Google Doc as a as a point of reference. We don't have to give it to them. Okay. Right. You know, right. just exactly. in terms of discussion yeah. purposes. And so I just put down as an action that members should go to the Google Docs and make suggestions as they think of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that work? And I think they may find it valuable insight. You know, they should probably come up with a skeleton based on their techniques, what they've done, open-ended, all that stuff. But they also, if he's in Portland, Oregon, doesn't necessarily know a lot about costumes. So they might find a lot of merit in some of these questions as to help them learn more about the community. So I don't think you're wasting your time. I just think you want to make sure that they want to get there. Well, in this meeting, I'd like to lean into that a little bit. You brought that's a great point. And I, I would like us to, whenever any opportunity we have, we shall assume that you will speak with Harriman on, you know, about those questions because they have the experience within the state of Maine. So we're, we're forcing them to work with each other, not with us. And hopefully that anyone that they've subcontracted with will do their homework and research the area. 
Well, that's why we're working with Harriman because they said they did it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, our yeah. contract is with Harriman and market decisions works for them. Right. So if we have something we're not satisfied with, we need to go to Harriman and they need to talk to market decisions. We need to stay with who our contract is with in terms of communication. Yes, but if they have questions about our market, if we obviously can't answer them, we should lean into Harriman to try to come up with the answers because they're the ones that have the experience doing all of this. Yeah. Okay. One of the things I'm thinking about with starting to work with um, Robertson is, well, maybe this is again their experience, but how do we say, let's do three things, you know, mm -hmm. like, I don't want this to be too, or I guess I question how large of a net they are going to throw and how we guide or don't guide what it is. I guess we just need to keep our end result, our end, our big question in the forefront of our minds, which is what does the town Thompson want, right? And like we can read the mission statement. To them. Not one. What, what what do they need? Sorry, yes. we know what, what they, they need. Want, so that's it. Our yeah, right. yeah, right. And I think we want to be careful too because we may lose goodwill with the public if they feel like they're just going to do it another survey. Right. So like, right. Hey, wait a minute. A thousand of us did your survey 18 months ago. Now we have to do it again. What's, so it needs to be obvious that whatever we're asking or the way they ask it is something different than what people did before. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, and the statement is desires and needs of talks. So it is a combination, but of, of desires and needs. I also put down under action items that you'll contact. Um, I want to make sure I said Mark Group. Yeah. Uh, Robert certainly said <clears throat> to bring suggestions to you October 16th. Yeah. yeah, I can't think of anything else that we need to do. Oh. Yeah, thanks for your list over there. I don't know. Just that. Just that we have uh, vacant positions on the TCCC. If, you, if anybody um, has any recommendations, send out the application to people you think would be good, and then we can fill those two positions. Well, so does Allison now. Yeah. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> we are in the same neighborhood, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Like, <laughs> anybody outside of their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Popular neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the best. I don't have anything else, sir. Well, we'll accept people from the foresight side. That's <laughs> that's it's an important area. This could be where this center may end up. You never know. Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, second it. I'm done. No, six oh four.